So, continuing with our program today, first of all, we would like to remind you that if there is any issue regarding interpretation, you can in the chat find the link for the simultaneous translation in case you need it. The panel we will have in this session will be related to the bilateral hiring of green technologies in Colombia, and for that we have Maria Claudia Alzade, Commissioner in the Regulation of Enatec, Andres Tesca, Vice President of the Energy Markets, Juan Carlos Reyes, Ma General Manager of Delivrex, Francisco San Clemente from Renovatio, Carlos Javier Rodriguez Jimenez in Enerfin, and as moderator we will have Alejandro Lucio, Director of Wholesale Maxima Consultors. Given that, I give the floor to Maria Claudia for the introductions to then begin with the panel. Thank you, Catherine. Welcome, everyone. First of all, uh, I would like to say I'm happy to be here, and as every year we have been present, it's great to be able to be here and be part of these debates and how we're going to be working with this. I will begin introducing this idea, how we have been dealing with it in the Commission, and from there For us, it is very important that in these bilateral hirings and contracts, there must be some conditions that are necessary in order to guarantee that the prices are efficient. These conditions mean that there is an offer and demand, and the more supply and demand, so there is a transaction with the two different interested parties. It's also important that these transactions are not affected regarding the knowledge that the counterpart has. So that might mean a price change and also the standardization, which allows these mechanisms so that these contracts can continue So, in 2018, the problem is that, that the different bids that were created in that moment, and obviously they didn't meet, or they don't meet the requirements and the procedures, and this is a problem in order for the price transfer in the regulated supply. So, this year, we have been working in different ways in order to achieve that these conditions are met. It was very hard to achieve a design where all the different members were happy, and this has been taken a while so far, specifically, but there were many difficulties in order to reach an agreement And we have to see how to evolve in this market. First of all, what we try to do the solution 114, we did some changes into the solution of the bids uh, 130 in 2019, that even if we cannot meet these conditions, with different marketing agents had to work together to get better transparency and to mitigate somehow the risks that these bilateral hiring in under these conditions meant inefficient prices that could be transferred to the users. After this change, there was a fix to this problem, but the 
there was an interest to continue working with Systems as May, and in that moment is born this IDF 114 2018. What does the market want and how can we identify it, this process, after so many years debating and discussing the different options for marketing? And well, we shall do it. With those who know the market, the activity and the needs for the contracts and so that they can propose for the regulators that it's very important that the final prices are efficient. How can we do this? We need that the different agents got involved and we had to basically overlook different aspects to guarantee that the prices were efficient. Also when we were designing the 114 not only was the problem of how to design this MAI, what the characteristics they should have, but at the same time it's necessary to make sure that with the conditions and features that are special that wouldn't allow them to be part of the market with the current mechanisms in the regulation. Therefore, we could afford this expansion in the generators. Also, there was a difficulty in different signs for the mechanisms for the contracts and also considering that we have a very important restriction regarding the neutrality in technology because now again it's important for the regulator to have an efficiency in the price and know so much the technology it's not part of our goals but the efficiency of the prices so we also decided okay this is a way to make sure that all parties could handle and make sure there is a um, efficient price. So all the generators could create mechanisms so as to create different stages where we could find where to sell our, the projects in the long term in order to channel their projects on time. Then, after seeing the same scenarios and the same mechanisms happening or taking place, these some scenarios could be also complementary. For example, in the contracts of the long term and systems as may, where these situation and conditions can have a mechanism where they can cover their commitments, the financial commitments, in case of the problem with the availability, or that adjusts in this generation. So this could be supplementary. So this has been the, bar, the way the 118 started and there have been uh, different proposals developed and that we have been receiving. One of them is the one as a counterpart and the one that the market, the stock market in Colombia is currently suspended but we haven't yet received the modified proposal but we know that it's being designed and that soon we're going to receive, especially on Monday, we were able to publish this inquiry where we do an evaluation of the mechanism and we had a good result meeting all the commitments and conditions that we believe needed in order to transfer the prices properly. So that 206 solution was also incorporated where we can see the different analysis done in this sense. And this process, this will happen for all the mechanisms that arrive in the stock market. And there's a formula that needs to be looked after 
and we need to make sure that is put through all the procedures that the law 142 implements. So there is a minimum of three months for the tariff matters. This is an inquiry that shouldn't be so long because of the scheme and the process has been properly assessed. Okay, in order to conclude this idea, I want to remark the importance of the involvement of all different agents for us, all the different parties, all the marketers, for them to take part into the creation and design. So there is uh, an environment where the contract transactions are done in a proper way and efficient prices for the regulated demand. We want to make sure that the prices are efficient, but also the mechanisms. It begins to be interesting because we have to achieve and get the energy with more agents, better offer, and in order to reflect how the bilateral contracts work. Thank you very much. I will now give the floor to the next speaker. Perfect, thank you very much for your intervention. Now Alejandro is connected. Alejandro, can you hear us? I can hear you well, can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Okay, Alejandro, so I'll give you the floor so you can begin your panel. Perfect, Catherine. Thanks, Mary Claudia, for the introduction. Well, we have a, an amazing panel regarding the members. We have, as you have seen, the side of the regulator. When we think of trying to find through the resolution 114, and see how the private elements can also take care of the marketing processes that promote a liquid market, a transparent market, of transparent prices in the electric industry. And for 15 years we have been working with this and this is a new approximation of what the regulator needs to do and that we, are, we all expect to have a good result. So now I will ask a question to Claudia regarding her presentation. On the other hand, we have members offering different mechanisms regarding this resolution, 114. We have different members from different companies and we're going to consider and ask them how they see the implementation of their mechanisms. And at the same time, we have the commercializing representation for those interested in buying energy in the long term. As many of you know, Renovatio has promoted an uh, auction or a call for bids for renewable energy purchase in the long term and we're going to give you this perspective regarding the negotiation, the bilateral negotiation in order to achieve these contracts whether we have to wait for the implementation in a public auction. And last but not least, we're also going to hear from Carlos Rodriguez, who has developed the projects for many years. So, regarding the long-term contracts and the differences, and in the Colombian market, where we have seen the PPA contracts, a long-term contract, so we have a very interesting panel. I am going to start. I, ha I have some questions for Claudia. I would like to say that, but you already mentioned many of those. But still, I would like to, from the point of view of the regulator, understanding that, as you said before, this is a problem that we have in the market and we have had it for many years. There have been many different attempts, as many as you can imagine. I want to know, 
have you received, the Commission has received well from the point of view of the market agents, from the point of view of the producer's interest, and do you believe that this situation is going to be important and big in an introduction to the market that is transparent, liquid, with efficient prices after two years of posting a resolution? What is the balance of the Commission regarding the interest of the agents and the promoters if besides these mechanisms do you consider that have there been the Commission more agents promoting the Definitely we have decided to, well, first of all, we have two proposals. Either having, uh, in the last two years that we have been implementing the resolution, we have two proposals. First of all, is we have to stay aware and we are focused on what is being done and we are very interested in knowing which are the uh, mechanisms and what they want to do in order to participate and we want to know their prices as well. And obviously with joint participation as well, when with the use of the mechanisms, is the interest of the Commission, yes, to have more participation in terms of the regulating agents to develop mechanisms that address their needs. I do believe that, and I do agree that this is a way, this is an innovating way of telling the market do it yourself, tell us what you need. And because we cannot have a crystal ball to know what they need exactly, they need to let us know and they need to do it as well for the market. So by having these mechanisms, we have had uh, certain situations in which we have had the chances to have and implement good mechanisms and also meet all the requirements that should be met doing an evaluation of everything that the review implies and everything that is going to be said. And as well, this year we had to stop a lot of activities or procedures of work because of the pandemic and prioritize. So I believe that for the existing years of the 118, we have had a very good balance and this is Oh, this was achieved through mechanisms that will be maintained and will be um, more adequate to the needs of the regulating agents. Actually, uh, hand in hand with what and uh, with the publish, with the fact that it was published and the, and we had the 114 resolution, that means that these mechanisms had more or gave more relevance to the agents and it was a vertical integration and everything related to the agents and the requirements of the agents to uh, the contracting. So they must adjust and adhere to these mechanisms in order to sell their energy and I would hope that there will be a more like liquid market, let's say. Yes, with these conditions, of course. Yeah, uh, hopefully it will uh, improve. Thank you, Mara Claudia. I'm going to give the floor to the promoters who are actually submitting these and uh, their processes before the commission and they are adhering to the resolution so they can start operations. And as you were saying, Maria Claudia, to um, set their rates as well. And I agree with the fact that in the search of, um, um, of a contract, well, Carlos will tell us about the difficulties and the and the specifications, specific of our market and that will tell us what do they mean, like having these mechanisms and these resolutions in place for renewable energy, which is very relevant to have a contract market that is easy for people in order to have good definitions that would be great for the audience and knowing the rates that would and that can last um, more than two or five years by implementing mechanisms. So I would like to ask Juan Carlos Tellez um, to present, and he has had this digital platform that has been established for some years already, 
And he's been doing all the procedures in order to enable and to activate all his transactions. So, Juan Carlos, I have several questions I want you to address. First is, what is happening with this mechanism that is required for the operations? In which stage of the process are you? And actually, the CRE published the previous year this um, this new implementation of rates. So can you tell us a little bit about that? And can you tell us what is the mechanism, which is a financial coverage mechanism? Um, how can this actually uh, facilitate the contracting of renewables? And how can you um, have bilateral contracting with this? Thank you, Alejandro. Well, regarding how we can actually develop this in the energy sector with these um, new sources, it is important to mention that this is a flexible market, that it will be cross-sectional for the risks that entail this type of projects, not just for this type of technologies, but also we need to consider all the generation matrix. So I believe that the financial market actually would be easier for it to to incur into the risk of financing these type of projects within a structure that is very well known by them. So the financial market, they are practically experts on these standardized derivatives. So some of the um, um, there are many members of the financial market. So. There is an important, um, it is very important that this is a complement, but it is um, important to note that one of the requirements of the 114 is that the mechanism should comply with a series of uh, requirements, as Mara Claudia say, said before, there are certain guidelines that they must follow, and in the compliance of those principles or guidelines, there it is a very, very explicit what it is needed by the 114 resolution. So recently, we had a resolution 206 that provides comments. And this actually confirms that some agency complies with all the, or agent complies with all requirements. So hopefully, the market will analyze everything that is established by the commission, and especially the incentives the incentives that are created in order to participate in this mechanism from the 114. Thank you, Juan Carlos Andres. With this understanding that you are have a platform of, that is already in operation from some year from these derivatives, so in the case of the uh, stock exchange, this is a slightly different because they are actually uh, launching a new market within their own activities, and that implies a series of approvals. And what is happening with the stock? What are some of the um, part of the specifications? What are some of the uh, futures of it? And what happens with these uh, tenders that you carry out? Thank you, Alejandra. Uh, good morning to all my colleagues here. Thank you for the invitation. I appreciate the invitation. So since last year, July 4, we actually submitted a proposal before the uh, Gas and Energy Commission. And first, I wanted to tell you what this is about. I want to tell you that this is a system of auction, of contract auction. And by doing that, they will have um, shares. And these will have different auctions. We will have different auctions and different types of products by uh, time zone blocks. For example, we have one of 24 hours. We have a, a solar block and a non-solar block. So. Hopefully, the, if there are some that are interested only in the solar block, they should focus on that or buying solar energy that is um, of their interest and complete their profile maybe with a non-solar 
profile with non-solar block in order to adjust and refine their own uh, profile. And we will have different terms. We will have contract auctions from one to three years or one to five years that will be updated every 15 days. And also we have other auctions of 10 to 20 years that maybe will be done on a quarterly basis. So this way we are trying to, that is the way we're trying to set up our own project and that it adjusts to all the uh, resolutions also of the, and the requirements of the commission and to have long-term contracts from 10 to 20 years. And there is one feature that is the one that we have taken a long time to work on in the process of approval is something that, well, the idea is to change the rules of the game, let's say, that the agents of the energy market may be able to participate directly in the negotiation forums. And this is something that we have been discussing with the superintendency of finances and with the financial regulation department. And also I am, I am sharing the example of what's happening in other places with the participation and the um, shares in the uh, energy market and as part of this whole infrastructure. So we are waiting for, well, first we're going to have a technical conversation in which we will include and discuss regulation on actually abroad. And we are waiting for the decree in that sense that allows the agents and public and private um, uh, parties to participate directly. And the conclusion of those agreements would be done among traders and generators of energy that may be registered directly in the system. So our big bet, let's say, was about bringing or having a market in which agents uh, participate directly in, it has been acknowledged as by the commission and that this is something that should be agreed upon and the idea is for these agents to actually actually play the game and with a certain amount of elements and requirements that should be met with, according to the resolution as per the resolution 114 and to assume the risk of the counterpart as well uh, at the end of the day the agents will be able to manage their own risk and participate in a liquid market. So at this point, Alejandro, we are awaiting um, for this approval. We are waiting for the update of our proposal. We will be submitting it to the minister, to the commission, and we will be telling them what's been happening, in which point are we in the process, so that and because our interest is for agents to be able to participate directly. Thank you, Andres. So what is your estimate or your best estimate in order to start these auctions? Well, we are betting for half uh, middle of next year to have this uh, new opportunity at the end of the year, but the approval process with the financial and department and with the commission, once our mechanism is updated, we believe that at the middle of 2021, by June, July next year, and while we are, st we will be starting the operations at that point. Thank you, Andres. Uh, okay, we have um, been have been very much involved. That actually we do want to see these two mechanisms being implemented. I believe that the two mechanisms, more than competing among each other, they complete each other. And a for an for an energy generator to have both mechanisms operating will be the best choice for the risk management of the market something that today with the uh, market and the market doesn't have as of today. So that would be the short and midterm of what is happening today. And with the experience of the renewals, it's very, very interesting to know this. But in some weeks ago, they launched their initiative of having a renewables auction of procurement of energy. So I would like to ask Francisco a couple of things. 
especially uh, what is happening with the process, in which stage of the process are we, and what is happening with the generators, producers with this proposal. And, and on the other hand, uh, you have the first private renewables auction. And what difference um, is there with the initiative you launch and other callings made by the traditional generators? Not really focus on renewables like open re open call in order to buy energy. So I do want to see the differences. We do like to know about the differences. Um, actually, actually, a couple of days after your private auction launch. There was the announcement of the ministry of this open auction that will be launched by the ministry in order to do regulations for the 2021 year. So I would like to hear a little bit of your analysis from this analysis of the government. Go ahead. Thank you, Alejandro. Thanks to all the event organizers. Good morning, everyone. Let's begin with the first one. The adoption of the auction we released. The adoption has been very good. The reception has been very good. It surpassed our expectations. You have all seen in the press, everywhere in the media, all the sessions we've had. There are so many investors, developers, banks, press from everywhere, understanding how this scheme of auctions work. For the release, we had more than 400 people. The Q&A sessions, we've had more than 150 members. Regarding how to complete the annex for the economic offer, we have hundreds of people. And nowadays, we're in the process of reviewing the questions and answers in order to find the final terms the next Friday. And we have also received many questions. So it is very followed. There is a lot of interest for th about this. And one of the reasons why we released this first auction is because we have seen, besides the fact there is a goal in order to hire and contract renewable energy that is very competitive, seeing the auctions from last year, we also have seen that in the market there is a space, there was a niche that no one was taking. And Carlos will be able to tell you better, but we ha we perceived that the developers who have been able to solve these environmental and social issues and have uh, an approved connection find the next problem, which is the long-term PPA. And this is where lots of the projects are suffering because they cannot find many options in order to sign contracts in the long term. So that was our reading of the market and the answer which is very good helps us confirm that our reading of the market is correct and then the government auctioned this is a good news for the sector it helps us to confirm that we are in the right path because we are following renewable energies for the non-regulated market and the government is going in the same direction so that means that we are going in the right direction and I mean this is very good news for the sector because we need more than one auction yesterday in another panel the developers who have more than one gigawatt in development they say that they would like to have a schedule by the government of annual auctions. So I don't see this as a competition for our auctions. I believe there is enough room for the government and our actions and any interested player because there are a lot of projects and lots of developers that are expecting and waiting for this type of opportunities to get their projects in operation. So regarding what is different about the calls for bids that are constantly released in the Colombian market by buying and selling. And why do we call it the first private renewable energy auction? This is the first renewable auction in the private market. Some people say that the first 
the first one in South America, but there are many differences actually. First of all, the call for bids that are normally released are in the regulated market. These are processes that are highly regulated with a call for bids that is open and a clear transparency in the prices and this is for the non-regulated market, what we do. This is an invitation, a private invitation for a bilateral contract where we invite all the developers in the country which are connected to take part in our auction. So that is one of the main differences. Also, this is an auction that is competitive for renewable projects that are non-conventional. And there are not so many about that. And especially regarding the deadlines, because if we take into consideration the regulated market and if we saw the more than 164 call for bids that have been open since the beginning of the 2018 until now, we would see that 60% approximately we have a deadline of one year and only 12% have more than five years as a term. And all those developing projects for know that a contract of one year or five years, you cannot finance a project. You cannot consider the debt so that this project can be financed. So, those would be the two main differences. The term, the deadline, and the fact that it's renewable energy. But I would like to remark the flexibility. I do not know any competitive process. I'm not saying they're, they don't exist. I just don't know that have as much flexibility as we have. The term can be from five to 25 years. The project is the one that tells us the beginning of the operation that they would like to have between January 2022 and December 2025, as long as it's the first day in a semester. We are giving them projects, the opportunity to present the curb that the project is generating. We are not saying that they have to give us a specific type of curve or if we buy the, the curve that they offer in the project, we are just giving them the option to sell us the surplus. So in order to help with their financing. So this is what we call the dream of the developers because they have so much flexibility that I want to say there are I don't know so many competitive processes with so much flexibility. We do it because we believe that if we give them this flexibility, they will give us better offers. Another important thing in this process, comparing with other projects that take place in Colombia, is the profile of the offers. In our case, there are companies that are new players, new technologies, new companies arriving in Colombia and not the same companies as always. It's also a more structured process, more than the usual call for bids. There must be some commitments that have to be fulfilled, reviews of the process for the start of the operation of the plant, and the purchase of the surpluses, I believe is innovator. It's really an innovation. Now we've done it because there was a bank who usually, you know, has a punishment for the surplus. So we believe that if the developer knows that the surplus will be sold, this is just about defining the price. But in conclusion, our auctions are much more similar as a product to the government auctions we even though there are some differences then to the call for bids that are released every day in the Colombian market thank you Francisco very clear we are all trying to think how we're going to talk to Carlos and see how he can sell their technology I am aware of the challenges that four years has been suffering and going through many challenges and now we can see him there in Colombia which means that his work has been successful. You better than everyone suffered under the understanding of the singularities of the Colombian market changing the mindset coming from the Spanish market all these in the Brazilian market as well 
understanding how to fund the projects, how how they are executed through the funding services, and you had to land bluntly and understand how the Colombian market works. This is what Francisco told us, that most of the contracts in Colombia are short-term. So, I would like you to share with us some of these beginnings, this landing, and this great achievement of the auctions last year, which I think it was the main goal to prove to show the demand that con co long-term contracts would give a benefit, this was achieved, and on the other hand, I believe that we must fulfill the goal that all the players in the market could understand how a funding contract works in Colombia and how the auction helps in this sense so that everyone can take part of the dynamic of the Colombian market. So, after that step through the auctions, after the auctions, was it easier to have these bilateral contracts or not? So, please, Carlos. First of all, as my colleagues have done, I would like to thank the organizers of the event and the offering for me to participate here. And regarding what you just said, as a matter of fact, when in 2016 I landed in Colombia, it was a big clash. It was a high contrast trying to change the mindset of what we had been seeing in other countries where we developed projects. In that time, nobody spoke about auctions. I believe not even the government was considering organizing auctions. So, when we arrived, we said, okay, how do you sell energy here? Evidently, in the spot market. But, as some of you have mentioned, there were contracts that everybody used, which was like two years, where the guarantees were very insignificant or non-existent, the contract was completely conditioned. To the everyday exhibition and the counterparts basically in great in a great percentage were just commercializers. So given this scenario, the next problem was the bank. We would go to the bank we wanted to fund a project, and my idea is this. I want long term, and they would say, in that time, the banks, they were not really using this, this funding system. It was not normal, it was not common. It began being used after the 4G and the roads. Until then, the banks were not using it. And when you told them that the counterparts was a PPA with this type of ca characteristics, well, after th that amazing, we were just talking about, okay, what a nice glass of wine we have had with them, but you would leave the bank without any sort of hope in the short term. Thanks God. With everyone's will, the government, the companies, both the investors as well as the commercializers, I believe that we all have learned and we have found a common ground between what they wanted and what they wanted so that we mostly feel comfortable. And especially, and this is the truth, at the beginning I didn't know the electric market, Mercado Electrico, thanks to the advisors and many, many meetings you begin to learn what are the security measures with the electric systems, the different security rings, and you start to mitigate risks. And you start lowering your expectations to reach what the Colombian market wants. 
the regulation, of course, is the one that determines the most important steps. There was an opening of the diversification of how to find the new types of energy, which is for uh, us fantastic to have all these alternatives because this allows us to spread our investments, not having all the eggs in the same basket. And this opened the way to have the stock markets and some private companies such as Renovatio are giving options and they must be accepted by the banks. After all, the highest percentage of the developers are going to be funding the project and we will do this through local or multinational banks, but all of them have something in common. Who is the counterpart? What is the term of these contracts? Those are the normal questions. And regarding the guarantees, what are you offering? So, regarding the regulation, well, this is very important. And also, the next step, which was the auction, that was the second junction point in the market by which we could give way to the projects happening and luckily in our case in the first time we participated and the second one couldn't achieve anything and we were working simultaneously trying to find a, a different contract that we mm, finally achieved and uh, with the, the which we are very happy and that's with whom we are releasing the project. But I would like to say as well that the, the great change in the minds of the commercializers was the development plan by which through the Article 296, I believe, which made that uh, some percentage, I believe it's 10% of the purchases must come from renewable energy. I think that starting in this moment, the doors opened to everyone being interested in purchasing renewable energy. And as my colleagues have mentioned, the new auction coming is very interesting, very appealing, and so far, we believe that there are there are some doubts regarding the details. I received two messages about people trying to buy 5,000 megawatts and there was going to be a COD or beginning of the supply for December 2022. I'm doing some numbers and seeing what we've got and what other promoters have. I know that nowadays there are approximately 4,700 megawatts authorized, 2,500 that are wind energy that are authorized, and these 2,500 are practically sold after the first auction, and I see that it's complicated that in a very soon auction there will be something apart from solar energy and also I believe that it is kind of hard to have this goal of 2022, considering that these projects are already about to begin. By the year 2022 seems critical in order to meet this deadline, considering all the problems with logistics. But, well, in our hand, we can say that it's great that the government is releasing this call for bids, and I also believe that it would be very important to have a schedule for all these events in order to have a good programming. But I would like to say that from the point of view, from the wind energy, which are a little bit more restricted re regarding geographic location for our projects, if we don't have a solution regarding connections, we will not be able to continue developing projects, at least in our HERA, which is 90% of the projects are. 
and we will not be able to continue and we will not be able to have a competitive auction we will have a solar auctions everybody will sell the same curve and probably for the buyers there will be some problems very clear Carlos, I would like to give the chance to Juan Carlos and Francisco to respond to briefly uh, conclude their um, insights and also wanted to ask the same that I asked to Maria Claudia. What do you think about the implementation of the mechanism? What do you think the interest is after the publication of 130 resolution and the restrictions we were mentioning? Additionally, if you want to say something Extra, because I didn't ask you about the auctions, if you're going to promote them and you're going to promote these transactional platforms, what do you think? Do you think that the government should finance these auctions? What do you think? Uh, would you like to start before we go to the Q&A session? So, Juan Carlos, please. His microphone is muted, I believe. Yes, sorry, I was muted. Alejandro, we have seen a great interest um, from the energy sector agents to know in detail our market. We know it's a disrupting market. It's a completely new alternative. And precisely because of that, and what we are trying to have is a very simple, efficient, straightforward, safe market. Those are our premises. So it is important to note that this is a double-edged um, market. The supply and demand can actually interact transparently without having to know who is your counterpart. And this will allow to have a good control of prices and a much more efficient control. So it is important to notice, uh, to say also that in the construction of our platform, this is something that we have been working on with the industry. It's not just the initiative of a bunch of financial people to wonder what the market needs. We actually have worked hand in hand with a technical committee and a technical board and with very active participation of CER and other affiliations of the energy sector. We have had feedback and very important support from the advising uh, board of training, trading, and we have also had the chance to have the uh, consulting and the advice from the wholesale market agents. So it's very important in order to build a market. A market, it's a vehicle that is developed develop in base based on the needs of the sector. So it is important to, to say that uh, this market is not only a market that allows for these financial transactions long term, but also because of the terms that we handle in these projects, we must have risk management during the um, process of the project. So we are not certain right now what is going to happen in the world in the future. Nobody thought there was going to be a pandemic during 2020. Climate change is becoming and worse and worse. So imagine the impact of a hurricane within the projects of these solar wind park projects, so what would, farm projects. What would happen if there is a climate disaster and affects this type of projects? How would the counterparts parties would be affected by this energy contracting? So we need a market that allows the agents of the energy sector to manage risk during the development of the products. Not, and also having like a source to be able to find a financing for their own projects and also knowing how they will be managed from here on. So based on that, we do consider that there will be a learning curve, very, very important learning curve in, for the energy sector in a country in which 70% of energy is regulated energy. So it becomes very uh, relevant to have a motivation and incentive for these agents to start being more dynamic and more and transfer into this market. And for this, we need regulatory incentives uh, proposed by the commission also for these agents to feel comfortable with the 114 mechanisms and how they can participate. So this will allow us to develop and 
basically complete the generation of these projects as well as the management of risk throughout the lifetime of these projects. Thank you. And Andres, what do you think? I believe that for the 114, that meant a very important milestone in everything that has been done since 2002. I think this conversation started back then. So it's a 140 degrees um, shift because this is actually going to change the way we do contracting of electric energy in a more transparent way, at least publicly, with facilitating this. So on the one hand, we have we, we need mechanisms that facilitate uh, things. And once you see the markets abroad, I mean, I did a very uh, thorough analysis of other markets to see how they coexist. There are many platforms that exist right now. We have derivatives brand product. We have some markets where we have the standardized products. At the end of the day, they all, as Carlos saying, or Francisco was saying, they are all trying to adjust to the profile of each of the agents. There is no pro product that solves all the needs of everybody. We need different products for different needs and with good financing, especially. It's not a problem, it's just a lack of knowledge on how to tackle the financing, financing issue. And in Colombia, we are just learning this. So I believe that there is um, there are multiple products that will lead to more efficiency in the way that agents are covered and the way this facilitates the development of new generation projects. So there's more ahead, and I believe the agents, the more products they have, it's going to be better. Actually, in terms of the uh, non-regulated um, users, they are very, very efficient in buying energy. They try to adjust, adjust as best as possible. And the more products they may have, they will start adjusting their portfolio of prices, and it will be much better for them. So what we're going to see is a new way of doing businesses here. And this is a learning process because this didn't exist before in the market. So we're going to have to learn a little by little uh, together with the agents and different ways of mechanisms and doing businesses and somehow this will be adjusted as well and offering more and more products adjusting to the profiles of the people actually we're thinking beyond that we're thinking about more beyond the mechanism what else can we offer not just a negotiation platform but also other ways of trying to support the uh, companies as Renovatio as Carlos company that will be able to close down big deals and generation uh, deals in order to facilitate all of this for the industry. Thank you, Andres. I think we will have to close now, but if we have questions from the audience, uh, we will respond them. Otherwise, if there are no questions, we appreciate everybody's attendance. We Really appreciate it as well to see their perspective from the regulators, from the agents, from promoters. So hopefully uh, this is clarifying things for the Colombian people here who are trying to do contracting. Do we have any questions? No, Alejandro, we don't have questions so far. So thank you very much, Alejandro, Maria Claudia, Francisco, Andres, Juan Carlos, and Carlos Javier for accepting the invitation and for letting us know uh, what you think on this uh, topic. And please, uh, for the rest of the attendees, we would like to ask you to go back to the plenary session for the closing session um, of this uh, forum from Colombia. We will have Carlos uh, Largo's participation. And thank you all very much. Let's continue with the program. See you later.